Thanks for joining us. This is The Herd, wherever you may be and however you may be listening. We're on iHeartRadio, Fox Sports Radio, and right here, FS1. Also, you can find us on Sirius XM Channel 83. I would listen to me, but I'm on the air right now. Joy Taylor is joining me. Dante Jones in 50 Minutes. How are you? I'm doing great. We got some breaking news last hour. Let's refresh it for those just turning in. Kyler Murray, the spectacular quarterback at Oklahoma, uh, was given the option of signing with the Oakland A's for 5 or $10 million bucks or going to the NFL. And uh, Kyler Murray had a big decision to make, and Kyler Murray has today announced he's going to go to the NFL over baseball. I think it's the right decision. I think you can make more money, more guaranteed money in football. I think football is a more dynamic sport that elevates its players. If I was a young athlete and I was given the choice of going to baseball, which, you know, it's amazing about baseball. Yasiel Puig came into the sport and had some flair and was dynamic and fun, and baseball shouted him down. Like, if you're a fun baseball player and you're a prospect and you got some personality and you play with flair, be warned, baseball doesn't like it. I mean, Bryce Harper gets pushed back. Don't stare at a baseball. Don't stare at a home run for two seconds. You know, it's like Kyler Murray's exciting. And the NFL likes exciting. And the NFL's now in the last couple of years said, hey, you can do some celebrations even now. So and I think he, you know, again, he's a different kind of a quarterback because of his size. I mean, there are some parallels to Russell Wilson, although I think it's completely unfair to compare anybody to Russell Wilson. He's one of the 10 best quarterbacks, uh, certainly in football, that I've seen in a long time. But I think the kid made the right decision. Good for him. Kyler Murray's chosen the NFL. And I do think if I was Jacksonville in the first round, I think they have the seventh pick. If I was Jacksonville, I would take Kyler Murray. I would. I think their roster is good enough to win. I'd roll the dice. By the way, let's say he doesn't work out. It's the seventh pick. It's not like years ago. If you blew the first-round pick on a quarterback, you were trapped forever. We've seen all sorts of teams pick the wrong quarterback, and they're fine. So if I was Jacksonville, I'd take Kyler Murray. I'd roll the dice. A third of the first round's a bust anyway. At least go for a guy that is unbelievably profoundly talented at the quarterback position. Coming up in 15 minutes again, uh, Dante Jones stops by, former Cav, friend of LeBron. Well, 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 Lakers got a big win Thursday night over the Celtics. And I went to the internet, I was off on Friday, and look at what I'm reading. The Lakers season has been saved. They can beat anybody. They've come together. This team is for real. That is total, utter nonsense. So I checked my phone, and I thought, well, who do they play next? They're out east. Sixers. And I thought to myself, well, what if they go get beat by 25 of the Sixers? LOL. They did. NBA media, settle down. Individual wins in February are irrelevant. The Lakers are a completely average team, and that game didn't save any season. They're one star and 13 possible transactions. Kyle Kuzma is their second best player, and he disappears in games. He did against the Sixers. He does it all the time, and he's their second best player. And I know they're all transactions because I read stories last week where the Lakers were willing to give up every single young player. And I scolded the Lakers and I said, this is a big mistake. Do not get into business with the Pelicans like this. It will get ugly. It's a cautionary tale. When a team like the Pelicans has nothing to lose, be very careful about what you offer. They're just manipulating you because the Lakers put out a list of seven players and five draft picks. They were willing to give up. All the players now know their pawns. This is an average team with one great player on the back nine of his career, though he's still remarkable. He's not as dominant as he once was. He's coming off an injury. Only one other player is a true asset, Kyle Kuzma, and he disappears in games. And I thought the trade and all of it and all the nonsense in the media confused an average locker room. JaVale McGee... Magic Johnson flew out to the East Coast to talk to the kids and talk to the team after all those trade rumors were out there. And JaVale McGee was asked by the L.A. Times what he made of Magic Johnson talking to the players about all the trade rumors that never transpired. JaVale McGee said, it felt good. How am I supposed to answer that? How did I feel? Tingly inside? I don't know. The reporter said, was it productive? Yeah, I got so much out of it. It's crazy. Deep exhale. I don't know what you're trying to ask. Yeah, either do I. Magic Johnson flew out to soothe his young players who are freaking out 
which all young people, middle-aged people, or old people would do if they feel they're completely expendable. Magic Johnson talked about that meeting with the team. Quit making this about thinking these guys are babies because that's what you're treating them like. They're professionals. All of them. And, and this is how this league works. They know it. I know it. All deals are... <laughs> a lot of them are made in public. We didn't make it in public, but that's part of That's what happens, man. We got big boys here. Did you? And, uh, they bounce back. They're fine. They're not fine. They didn't look fine yesterday. This is not about kids being babies. I'll say it again. Luke Walton is in big trouble. This is a confused locker room. And be very careful about doing business with people who have nothing to lose. The Pelicans didn't dirtied up all the trade rumors, and manipulated Magic and the Lakers. I don't blame the players. If you can sense your demise or the fact that you're completely expendable, that's tough for anybody to deal with. Guys, are some people are married. Some have families. Some are comfortable with their current employer. That win against the Celtics, take a deep breath meant nothing. This is going to be an incredibly choppy second half, and Luke Walton, unfortunately, will take the hit. Let me shift gears to this. This is uh, really confusing because I like this player. There is a rule in professional sports. There's two things you don't talk about. You don't talk about another player's wife, and you don't talk about another player's money. Oh, wait. Dak Prescott this weekend talked about both. Nobody's See? wife makes as much money as his wife does either. So make, make sure we know that, all right? When Tom Brady isn't uh, uh, the breadwinner in the home, uh, then that's a great problem to have. So uh, in that case, uh, he can do that. He, he, can, he can, you know, do his contracts however you want to do them. Oh, brother. Tom Brady's wife. First of all, once you get to $100 million net worth, $150 million net worth simply doesn't matter. It doesn't change anything. It's all about ego. Tom Brady has been restructuring his contract pre-Giselle and post-Giselle because Tom Brady is all about winning. Kirk Cousins isn't. Kirk Cousins is about getting his money. Kirk Cousins isn't dumb. Kirk Cousins knows that the more a quarterback makes, the less you can afford on your offensive line or in your running game. Both liabilities last year for the Vikings. Players make decisions all the time. NBA stars make a boatload of money with apparel and shoes. Therefore, guys like Kevin Durant best serve taking a little less to win more and shaping his legacy. Dak Prescott has all the data in the world now. He is saying he will not take a pay cut. He has all the data in the world. It is clear that in a salary cap league, the top six paid quarterbacks, none of them made the playoffs last year. Does Dak Prescott really believe that those two major endorsement deals, he's got one with yogurt and one with Campbell's soup, that he would have those if not for the Dallas Cowboys? Really? He really believes that. Does Dak Prescott believe that Zeke makes him better, that front seven defensively puts him in better field position, and that Tyron Smith at left tackle has elevated his protection? Once data is provided to any American, then the choices are yours. Tom Brady has been restructuring his deal. He did it back in the Randy Moss days because Tom Brady's a winner. Tom Brady knew that if I take less, we can get Randy Moss and we can keep he and Wes Welker. That's what Brady's been doing very early in his career. That's why he fits so well in New England. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if New England doesn't just pay Brady in goats since he is one. This is not about anything, about a wife, about money. That is just an excuse to take money and hurt your legacy. There's something very clear that is happening. The two biggest stars in America right now in sports 
are NBA stars and NFL quarterbacks. And with both, we have decisions that need to be made by those stars and quarterbacks. We know that quarterbacks are better served, Drew Brees a great example, of taking a little less. And since Brees decided to do that several years ago, the Saints' running game and offensive line and defense are significantly better. And it should be noted that Steph Curry made $42 million last year off the court. Clay Thompson made 13 and has virtually no personality. Kevin Durant makes more with Nike than he does with the Warriors. But those players know that nobody really watches the NBA from October to February, but they do watch in April, May, and June. And you want to be on TV. And you'll be on TV if you're on a team good enough to win series after series after series. So NFL quarterbacks and NBA stars, be it the wife or the shoe deal, know that career longevity and elevation is secured by not being, data now clearly provided, the highest paid guy. Dak Prescott, Brady's not about his wife. It's not anything about that. Tom made a career decision pre-Giselle. I want to constantly restructure my deal because I want to win games. The question now, Dak, do you? Coming up next, a breaking story, Dante Jones as well. But first, Valentine's Day is coming up Thursday. Last night, I didn't even buy Sherry berries as a gift. I just wanted to eat them after dinner. A little pasta dinner. Look down in the refrigerator, Sherry's berries, second box, rifling through it. Fresh strawberries, delicious, plump, beautiful, dipped in decadent toppings, dark chocolate, milk chocolate, white chocolate. They're amazing.